Welcome everyone to Ashby's quarterly IBC webinar meeting. My name is Marta Kropczowska and I'm the Programs and Communications Manager here at Ashby. I'll be emceeing the slides today and I just want to mention to everyone that today's meeting uh, and webinar is being recorded and we will circulate it around for those who uh, registered the event and for um, all of our uh, IBC members. And with that, I will pass it on to Bob to start us off. Excellent. Thank you, Mon. I appreciate all the uh, coordination uh, to make this happen for uh, all of our members. Um, it's a great quarterly visit to be able to catch up and get a little bit of an education at the same time. Uh, so today, our agenda is uh, fairly similar to uh, most of our meetings. Uh, we're uh, reviewing the agenda. We'll have a quick call to order, uh, go over some administrative updates, uh, some of our research topic updates, and then we have a great keynote speaker uh, discussing smart building solutions, integrations in the built space. Uh, it's Gary Harvey from Delta Electronics. Um, we'll share a little more about Ashby Podcasts, uh, as well as the journal and white papers. Uh, and we'll wrap up with new business, some last announcements, and, uh, and then a final adjournment. So with that, uh, again, would like to welcome everybody. I'm Bob Allen. I'm the chair of the IBC. I'm with NAVCO uh, Security Integrators. Very fortunate to have uh, longtime vice chairs uh, Arsha Chandra Shakara from Honeywell, uh, Robert Lane from uh, Robert Lane and Associates, and uh, Chris Larry from Engineering EXP uh, US Services. At the IBC, our goal is to work to strengthen the large building automation industry through innovative technology focused research projects. Uh, the IBC was established back in 2001, uh, where we started reviewing market opportunities. And we look to take strategic action uh, to monitor initiatives that relate to intelligent building systems and automation in the large building sector. The Council's projects promote the next generation of intelligent building technologies and incorporate a holistic approach to, that optimizes uh, the building's performance and savings. And I will say we certainly look for input from our members um, as to how we can improve the Council to make it more uh, beneficial uh, and uh, in really good quality of time. So with that, <clears throat> the, uh, the minutes and meeting notes are listed on the IBC website from our last meeting on November 21st, 2023. Um, I'd like to make a call for a motion to approve those minutes. Hey, Bob, Hashem, yeah, I approve. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have anyone who will second the motion? The council second the motion. Thank you. Hearing none opposed, the motion passes and the minutes are approved. All right. Uh, next up is a uh, research update. And I'm going to hand, hand that over to uh, Bob Lane to, uh, to go with that. I don't think Bob is with us today. Um... Uh, Bob, oh. so I'll, I'll take over. That's not a problem. I can sure. actually take okay. this over. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, so we actually have uh, two research projects, or, or I should technically say three research projects uh, taking place at any given time. But um, for our 2023 uh, landmark research project on intelligent buildings, we've um, just recently completed that and we'll be releasing that next Tuesday. Um, so, uh, you know, right now at this point, if you do go on the website, you can uh, download a copy of the executive summary. Um, and then in approximately four months or so after the embargo, the uh, full research uh, will be available uh, for purchase, um, whether you are a member or non-member. Um, but for now, you can certainly go on to our uh, website and uh, download uh, the executive summary for the uh, buildings, uh, technology and market trends uh, report. Um, and for the members listed on here, uh, the funders, uh, you will uh, be, the steering committee has already received the final uh, copies of the uh, findings. Um, and then anyone else um, that we have uh, contact uh, for will receive the, uh, the links to those uh, Tuesday of, of next week. So look out for that. And then of course, uh, for our current year, um, our current project, uh, for our buildings um, 
is uh, titled the Smart Building Trends and Technology Adoption uh, Research Project. Um, and it has garnered support from approximately uh, 13 funders uh, so far. We are still looking for uh, funders um, to support this project. Um, so please let us know if you are interested. Um, the RFP did go out to Ashby member research firms late last year. Um, and then um, earlier this year, uh, we held a research firm selection webinar where the initial funders um, listed on the screen here selected Harbor Research. Um, and Harbor has been actually doing um, our, our research projects for the last two years now. Um, so they've, uh, they've been selected again now uh, to, to perform that for this year. Um, the research will utilize both industry expert interviews and consumer surveys. They're going to be targeting approximately 300 commercial building owner operators in Canada and in the US, and they'll cover key topics, opportunities to gain an annual perspective of operator need slash outlook. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's worthy to note that these projects uh, are valued collectively at approximately 80,000 US dollars. Um, and we'll have an exclusive release to the project funders once completed a little later this year. Uh, there's two distinct funding level, levels. We have the bronze, which is at 5,000, and then we have the silver at 10,000. And um, really the difference between the two is with the silver, uh, you uh, get to participate on the steering committee to help um, guide and steer the direction of the project. So again, for those who are interested in joining, please let us know. You can reach out to us at um, admin at ashby.com um, or really any contacts that, uh, that you're familiar with at, uh, at Ashby and we'll be happy to um, meet with you and, and discuss that and let you know exactly what all those are about. Um, so with that, I will pass it back to either Harsha or Bob um, to introduce our keynote. Yeah, we go Thanks. right over to Harsha for our keynote. Go get them. Thanks, Martha. Um, and good, morning, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Gary Harvey, a prominent voice at Delta Electronics, uh, who unveils the current market dynamics and regulations propelling the need for smarter and more efficient buildings. He's going to speak on smart building solution integration in build spaces. A bit of background of about uh, uh, Gary Harvey. Uh, he's the director of business development and operations for Delta Electronics Building Solutions Group and is responsible for development of smart solutions that incorporates the technology and expertise for Delta and, various, and its various companies within the building automation business group, including lighting, automation controls, more monitoring and analytics. He has been involved in specification market for more than 15 years, working closely with many top level designers, architects, and end users. Gary Harvey is graduate of Lycoming College in Business Administration, um, we have a maximum of 30 minutes for this presentation and 15 minutes of for Q&A. Uh, with this short introduction, I welcome Gary Harvey for this uh, presentation. Over to you, Gary. Oh, thank you, Harsha, for the uh, nice introduction and nice to uh, meet everybody on this call. Um, so hopefully we'll, you'll find this um, <clears throat> very educational and entertaining of how we, as a industry, need to start to look at smart buildings and, and how we can start to integrate different um, solutions and opportunities to create a very, create a smart building or a, a, the infrastructure because technology has really come on board where we can start to look at things horizontally versus uh, vertically. Next slide. So just kind of some overview of the market um, and some of the trends. So we know that, um, the IoT or the building IoT is transforming the <clears throat> the market. We're starting to see more and more of these uh, devices, a lot more uh, <clears throat> automation, uh, AI, all those different things that are going to start to really tie in the performance and the efficiency of the building. Um, the big buzzwords right now, obviously, reduced energy consumption. What's my environmental impact? <clears throat> ESG, carbon footprint. All of those things are starting to come into play as the <clears throat> building owners or designers are starting to have projects that need to meet these specific requirements, whether it's from legislation or just, you know, um, the main focus of an organization. Um, and you want to have optimization. And I think that's really kind of the key of what I wanted to uh, talk about in this presentation is how do you optimize 
your building um, efficiency, your uh, energy usage, the utilization of the space uh, from not just from security, but from healthy and all of that and, and how different uh, systems can now be viewed as a holistic ecosystem as opposed to just an independent uh, vertical <clears throat> system within a building. Next slide. So from uh, memory, what we're starting to see is, um, you know, from a pent up demand and, and ease of a supply chain, uh, just between 2021 and 2022, over 14% increase in just IoT devices being put into uh, the built space. Um, and over the next couple of years through 2028, we definitely see the uh, devices in these commercial buildings uh, growing at a, a CAGR of about 13.7%. So it's kind of maintaining that growth that it saw in 2021, but definitely the the spike here uh, that we're starting to see. And it's it, the deployment of these IoT devices is becoming very um, important, as I mentioned earlier. They're the, those are the devices now that are starting to connect everything, to talk to each other, to make these smart buildings and the need for integration is critical, but we can see just from industry information, it's not something that's going away and it's projected to grow quite significantly um, across the board. And you can see um, in some cases, some of the uh, different um, groups that are doing these studies, many of them are above the median, not many are, are below the median. So we know and we can start to build from this of th this isn't going away and we need to figure out a way to um, integrate all these different devices into common platforms and solutions. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, you know, ESG and sustainability, right? It's a big, big buzzword right now. Um, but it's very important that we focus on this and not just from the energy standpoint, but again, across social and governance and uh, Different organizations can be better community, better in the community, better to their employees. But focusing here, kind of on the well, on the energy side. But um, I'm sure this is known to most of all of us on this uh, webinar. But it, buildings consume 36 percent of energy um, and output 30 percent of the global emissions. These are huge numbers, uh, especially when we're starting to talk about. Uh, growing population and things like this, and it tends to only go up. Um, but through technology and integration, we can start to look at different things and how we can we can actually play a role in um, reducing this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, too, uh, regulatory uh, regulations and reporting is becoming very important. A lot of things are being put in place where you have to you have to meet certain guidelines or there's going to be um, strict penalties in place. I think that's a lot of what's probably driving the need for the IOT devices or smart buildings, or as we use that uh, terminology, but um, ESG, very important um, <clears throat> thing for many different companies in many different aspects. But I think it's definitely, again, something that's here to stay and um, it, it's just going to continue to evolve as being kind of the next generation for us to start to look at how uh, buildings are um, controlled or how they are monitored, that they all fall under this large umbrella of ESG and what is the corporate message that a lot of these companies are starting to do in ESG. Next slide. Um, and then from uh, some technology and innovation, um, another buzzword, AI and machine learning, but we're, we're transitioning. We went very quickly to the cloud. Now we're starting to switch very quickly to these cloud-based AI and machine learning um, solutions. That's helping drive the integration here. Um, open standards and protocols are very important in the overall aspect of an integrated system. They obviously have to be scalable. Um, and we have to learn how to work within legacy systems. Um, the 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 cost of doing um, a complete new system is probably not in the works for many companies, but we have to figure out a way as an industry and work together in creating those solutions that are going to bridge those gaps and help uh, 
the built space, get in, get more into the technology realm um, and start to meet some of those um, requirements. And, you know, edge and cloud computing are providing that essential um, and additional processing and storage. Um, and, and that's probably a whole nother discussion of how um, the industry is going to just have to be able to support um, a lot of these IoT devices or machine learning or AI when it gets into the built space because of all of the analytics and all the power and everything that we're gonna need uh, to provide that infrastructure for these built spaces. Next slide. So when we start to talk about a smart building, what are some of the key um, components in there? And this, this is just a very high level overview and we can probably dive deep into this and find many, many more. But um, you know, when we typically, again, think of a smart building, we're looking at different sensors, lighting, obviously the controller is gonna be the backbone uh, utilizing everything that's happening in this smart building and, and creating those activities and actions. Um, we have to be concerned, what is the user interface? How are they going to interact with this? Is it manual? Is it through uh, tablets? Is it through a smartphone? Um, video, video becomes a very important part of this because now we can start to look at different infrastructures of how video can be part of the building system and create actions and activity for the integrated system. Um, the communication, as I mentioned, is very critical. Open protocols are going to help roll this out a lot faster, open up um, a lot more opportunities again, for, for all of us, but also for the end user uh, being able to create a smart building. Um, and I can't stress this enough, but the integration with other systems. So as I mentioned previously, is a lot of legacy systems are out there. And we know that those legacy systems aren't going to be replaced, but we want to further enhance what's already there. So how do we start to integrate into these other systems to create that smart building with newer technology and newer interfaces? Next slide, please. So when it comes to a building um, design and a smart building, Obviously, the key is to keep it simple. We can't have um, integrated systems that are so far above the um, user's ability that it's not going to be used effectively. If we keep it simple, integrated, um, and automatic, it's going to be used a lot uh, simpler. Make it accessible. Uh, most smart buildings, systems fail to deliver because they're too complex, as I mentioned, why we have to keep it simple. The more complex you make it, the harder it is for maybe a facility manager or a building owner to get all the capabilities of a smart building. Obviously keeping it open, the open platforms are gonna help devices talk to each other and start to build um, different data points for us to, as an industry, grab that data, utilize that data to help our customers um, and the end users manage a building, manage a, a built space. Um, and, you know, insight and not data. Um, I thought this was very interesting. Data is the new oil, right? We need oil to run a lot of different things in our lives today. You know, our cars, a bicycle chain, a, a snowblower, um, whatever it is. So the, the ability to utilize that and focus on the insight of the building, what is that key element that we need to help run uh, the building is is kind of the way we now have to start to look at look at a building and look at an infrastructure of how we start to bring the different IoT devices together. Next slide. So some examples of um, how we can start to integrate some of these different systems and look at them from different solutions. So when people start to talk about low carbon, we can take a holistic approach and look from outside the building where we're starting with capturing of the energy through the solar and the PV system, tr transferring that through into a, a battery and energy storage system. We need to meter the electricity or the power that's being brought in or consumed. <clears throat> Linking in different systems then to this, the EV charger system. They're tying in all different um, elements of um, 
the power they need certain they have certain supply and demand same thing with the building infrastructure or the led lighting but what i like about and when i talk about this is again you can see it's shown as a as a horizontal system as opposed to a vertical system so having everything running across a common platform and through the energy management gateway helps integrate these systems and we don't have to burden the cost of these different systems and it gives the user interface um, the ability to have more control, more data um, and more ability to make decisions and change action to get to that lower carbon um, integration. Next slide, please. Here's another example as well of a, when we go kind of inside the building where the previous slide, we took a look at how we can go from outside to inside but on the inside, if we drill down a little bit further, how we can have different uh, systems integrated across a horizontal platform is we don't have to have smart surveillance. We don't have to have smart lighting as independent um, control systems. We can now start to look at how all of these have a common denominator. And that common denominator, as I mentioned before, is data. All these data points can be gathered from the different um, elements of the um, IoT devices or the actual control systems and run on a horizontal platform versus individual uh, vertical platforms, making it a lot easier to use, making it a lot easier to understand and service um, and do all of that. And having it across open and common platforms makes it a lot easier for our um, installation base of you know, a smart building and a or commercial building, or in, in this case, I mean, the word building is kind of holistic, right? Any built space can utilize any one of these individual platforms to run simultaneously or together with other systems. Next slide. Another um, kind of example of how you can start to take and look at different systems, not just um, within the building, but how you can bring different elements of control, whether it's video access control and parking management, you can now have these three separate systems working their own um, ability and their own action and items, but then tying it all together and integrating it through the top level um, enterprise system. So now we can start to take a look and see how we can link someone coming into uh, the building, understanding who they are, what their characteristics are, and actually now start to set up the spaces that these people are going to be working in or collaborating in just from their first point of entry into the space. Um, and we can utilize different elements of this too, of the video surveillance or the access control to help determine where certain things are happening in the building, certain activities. Um, again, we can use this not just from an automation standpoint, but even a safety standpoint. And when you know where people are or who's in the building and who's not in the building, can now help make this building much smarter. And, and I use the term smart because again, we're not just talking about energy efficiency now, we're talking about safety and security a healthy building, meaning that someone can come in and feel safe mentally um, into a building, uh, but we can also use it for um, basically whatever we can with the data that we get. Next slide, please. So here's another very good example, as I was mentioning, where you can now have um, a horizontal kind of approach in looking at a uh, control system. So we know today in a lot of the uh, built environment that we have a building management system and we have a lighting control system, two completely independent systems. If we start to take a look at the technology and the hardware and the components and the software that are out there, the, the technology is in place today or can be put in place to now run two individual systems off one common platform. So there's not a need for say an independent lighting control system. We can do all that through a standard uh, Dolly room controller today, or we can 
have multiple systems. Um, as, as I mentioned, legacy is very important. So if you have zero to 10 or Dolly or Wi-Fi um, in that case, we can start to utilize the technology that's out there today to start bridging all of these different platforms into one common component or one common language to run various systems. And in this example, what I'm showing is how you can run your access control, your HVAC control, lighting control, and even shade control off one common platform. So we don't necessarily need multiple systems in place anymore. And if we start to integrate these now, it makes it even easier for the built environment to have these smart buildings. And you can then start to look at the, the ESG or the energy savings or just general um, smart environment for these um, commercial spaces. Next slide, please. So I just wanna walk you through a couple of different case studies out there that kind of show how different systems working together um, can be for the common good. Next slide. So um, one case study that we came across here, the edge um, in, in Amsterdam. So very large building, and you can imagine a large building like this needs to create a smart and sustainable workplace. Um, sustainable from the aspect of energy savings, obviously, um, and smart from the ability to uh, enhance the uh, employee's productivity. So what were they looking to do? And it's kind of the example I gave before is how can we now integrate and make this a smart building from an energy perspective, looking at the two most common areas that are creating um, energy in inefficiency is lighting and, and uh, HVAC and bringing those two together. Um, and how do we utilize the different elements of the building to start to <clears throat> tie these two together? Next slide. So what was the result in tying these two <clears throat> systems together into one common platform where I showed the architecture? Well, they're able to reduce um, <clears throat> 70% energy reduction across the building by utilizing the common system, utilizing different elements of the building, whether it's sensors for the lighting or <clears throat> occupancy for the HVAC, um, having a high bream rating of 98.36, which is pretty significant when we start to look at some of these ratings and some of the, uh, <clears throat> whether it's marketing activities or maybe tax savings that they can receive by some of these, um, but it made it one of the world's most sustainable office buildings in the world. And it created that productive environment for um, employees. Now, I, I don't have the details here, but there's lots of studies out there that can show um, when technology or the right comfort of temperature or lighting is used, it can tie back into a productive employee. So, all of these things can now start to tie together as we look to uh, integrate different systems. Next slide. So another one that was done, so with um, Duke Energy um, and looking in a very large built space that they have is how can they now start to bring different elements again of the building together with HVAC, lighting and security um, and utilizing um, the different elements of the building automation system and the interface for real-time energy uh, monitoring. And part of that is the reporting, obviously, of the data. How can occupancy sensors be used both from uh, across the board, whether it's lighting control, HVAC, or even um, security, uh, daylight harvesting, tying in the uh, lighting and the energy efficiency, and also uh, tying in the metering. Uh, infrastructure of this built space and and the data that we are able to gather from that metering or from the lighting or from the HVAC all tied into this. Next slide. So what were they able to um, achieve when they did this? Well, lead platinum, as we saw in the other one with Bream. Now, lead platinum is very important for not just marketing, but for 
um, incentives or different tax breaks or different things that are provided by being um, lead, as well as just being a good uh, citizen in the community and providing, you know, energy efficiency uh, throughout the space. They had a 22% reduction in their energy consumption, which is a su substantial number when we look at, you know, 36% of your overall uh, spaces util is inefficient. So just cutting down some of that is tremendous. Improved air quality, not uh, improved air quality from the aspect of it's good for the employees, it's good for the environment, but also now we can start to look at how in the control of indoor air quality can tie into other systems and see how they can uh, be more efficient in not utilizing the fresh air systems on a regular basis if indoor air quality is good. Um, and operational efficiency across the board, they're able to manage the building better um, and <clears throat> utilize employees a lot better. Uh, you could have um, less employees on a facility side because of your doing a lot more um, automation. Obviously it's not ideal to have uh, less employees sometimes, but from a bottom line perspective, that is something that you know obviously has to be considered in this uh, day and age. Next slide, please. Then uh, finally, uh, this one is outside, uh, another one outside of the US, uh, but this is a very good one that it, the two previous ones I talked about energy um, and again, very important of how we integrate systems from an energy perspective, but um, this one really took it to um, the, the next level and they were, and they were tying in um, different elements of the entire automation or technology. So from cameras and license plate recognition. So the example I had showed earlier is when you can bring these two systems uh, together for access control, looking at smart elevators and how different things can happen with the elevator systems based on cameras or people loitering. Um, automated control of some of the rooms um, and you know, LED lighting and control. Um, th that's kind of the common denominator, but when you start to look at the kind of the vertical stack here of the different systems that are all in play in a built space, now we have ways as an industry and through hardware and software to integrate all these different elements of a building, not just the energy efficiency. Next slide. So in this case, they were able to um, reduce um, or increase the efficiency of the air conditioning system by almost uh, 18%. Um, they were able to um, do a lot with the energy efficiency of the LED lighting with a dolly-based lighting control system. Um, and the energy monitoring um, analyzed the uh, energy consumption. But when, when we talk about, again, the, the energy monitoring, it's not just the lighting and the HVAC. As I mentioned, when you can have an elevator system tied into this, you're not sending elevators up and down without people in them. You're sending elevators when they're needed. You're utilizing the license plate recognition when people are entering the built space to know who these people are, when they're in the building, what rooms they typically will use and how you then control that space. Turning the lights on prematurely is not advantageous, but based on when they're, you, <clears throat> when they're viewed through a camera or they know occupancy is in the space, you can tie that to an action. So this was a very good uh, case study uh, for us to look at in the uh, built space, because again, it was tying in multiple systems, not just the energy system. Next slide. So what is the future for the built space um, and technology um, and integration? Um, so general supply chain issues are going to ease. Um, that should help a lot of the construction market um, and start to see more and more projects um, start to build up within the design phase or the implementation phase. Um, obviously the investment in IOT and solutions is gonna continue to grow as we saw with kind of the market forecasts 
and based on the market forecast and what we see from the uh, pent up demand and, and release of different projects, um, that's going to help uh, sustain. Um, and I said it earlier, AI is really going to start to drive a lot of what's happening here, both from technology, um, from the manufacturers, as well as investment from the uh, owners of the built spaces, whether it's a commercial real estate owner or a college campus or even a, you know, a, a, a high school or an elementary school. We're going to start to see more and more of this innovation be put in place. Um, a lot has to do with the energy um, efficiency and, and the smartness, but also from, you know, a safety standpoint and keeping the um, employees safe or, or the students safe on a, on a campus. All of this is starting to drive uh, the future for our um, industry in smart buildings. Next slide. And that's it. So thank you. Hopefully that uh, was very educational for a lot of you. Um, we think if we have some time, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Gary. A, a wonderful presentation. Um, you know, uh, kind of insightful discussion uh, topics we presented on IoT, uh, ESG reporting, uh, you know, and some of the things aspect of our technology and I like the aspect of uh, keeping it simple, accessible, open and insightful and also about the horizontal integration. So uh, it's quite insightful. Thank you for the presentation and uh, we are open to any questions from anybody in the audience. Please uh, feel free to kind of... Uh, Use your mic or submit via the chat Gary. box. Thank you. This is David Katz. Uh, Gary, great presentation. I saw many of the things at the HR that, that facilitate that. But uh, many of the certifications you're showing were the earlier green certificates, uh, BREEAM, LEED, whatever. And so we're really, the challenge of keeping it simple is that the issues as it relates to each occupant are, are significantly different. And so either we have to make very good code to automate those differences so it looks simple to every user. And so how do we do that? How do we, we're, we're looking at complex issues as to how this person wants their coffee or their light level, and it differs, but keeping it simple, we, we need, that open platform or in the cloud to facilitate that. Can you can you comment on that? And then well, some I, of the I, I would definitely agree. I mean, you, there's definitely complexities when we get in the building to each individual person. And I think, you know, it, it's it comes down to the the open protocols to do the control. And I think it's going to come down again to the end user as well as setting some of the expectations of maybe what to expect. Um, in the space, but I think, you know, as technology comes, whether it's, you know, AI, I think that's going to help drive some of the um, detail that's required, as you mentioned, you know, how does someone like their coffee or something like this? I think that's all going to start to become a factor. I shouldn't say become a factor, but it's going to become more of the standard for us to work around. No, I appreciate. It. And as I said, we're working with the China Academy of Building Research. They just came out with a smart building evaluation. They've done 20 buildings and uh, it's about interoperability. It's about getting those data to the right points to have insight into them. Yep. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, again, if there's people that want to see our building intelligence quotient, we're offering a free demo of that to facilitate how to interoperate all these systems. I believe we have a question in the uh, question and answer box, um, Gary, and, and that is, are you seeing automation built in building components as opposed to aftermarket installation for smart building automation? I'm just going to reread it quickly. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. So I think I mean, we are starting to see it built into the components. So we're starting to 
build that um, the smarts right into the control system as opposed to trying to utilize different um, IoT devices or elements. I mean, I think it's still going to, it's not there yet, and it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but at the end of the day, where we were saying keep it simple is the more we can embed or integrate the requirements into the hardware and the software, the better it's going to be. Are there, are there any other um, comments or questions from the group? I have a question. Yes. Hi, right, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question. It's kind, of, it's kind of a question with regards to the security of the, I guess, AI software system that is implemented you know, in such a case. So I'm like, in your opinion, like, do you think it would be more ideal to have like uh, all the AI software kind of housed in like local hardware within the building that it's being automated or would it make sense to outsource, you know, like the computing to like third party servers or all that? Well, I think I, I would, I would say that it comes down to the user, right? Some people will want to have that on site or some people don't want to have to worry about it. So I think what I'm seeing in, our business or in the industry is the real push to the cloud. So more of that third party viewpoint of where you can utilize uh, the video or all of the data points, as opposed to having to, um, you know, teach someone or set up a whole data center. So I would see it definitely more on the outside of the building from a uh, third party setup. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, seeing no more questions, uh, Gary, thank you so much uh, for your time. Um, and I will say, I guess, uh, Gary, you hang on the call or are you uh, dropping off? I'll stay on. That's fine. Because uh, maybe if, uh, if anyone else has any questions that they might think of, if you type it in the Q&A uh, box, Gary might be able to answer it uh, through that while we're continuing on with the meeting. Yeah, Gary, type in your email so we can touch base. Oh, will do. Yep. Yeah, put that in the chat, please. Awesome. And uh, Harsha, great job. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, moderating that uh, for us. Great job. Uh, Thanks. Next up. Got it. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, if you're ready, why don't we hop into podcast? Okay, great. Yeah, the Ashby Smart Homes and Buildings podcast is really gaining a lot of traction and expanding its audience and interest among those looking to participate. So if you're interested, please re reach out to us. Ashby is cons consistently looking for hosts and guests to enrich the podcast. And if this opportunity piques your interest, please feel free to contact the admin uh, on the screen, the email there. Uh, we do invite you to listen to the two latest episodes where we explore topics such as smart building business drivers, environment optimization, or establishing a strong foundation for new builds. I just, uh, a group, we put together a white paper on fire and life safety and smart buildings and how they integrate. And we just did a... Uh, we just taped a episode of uh, these podcasts on the, on the Ashby site. So uh, I wanted to give you that idea. It's going to be coming out uh, mid late uh, March. So that might be uh, a good one to look at too. So I thought it was a great uh, way to uh, get the word out on what we do. So you can re access our recently recorded episodes by visiting the website at ashby.com. I'll turn it over to Ken. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris and Bob. 
I want to talk about outreach that uh, Ashby makes available to its members to keep apprised of the latest developments in building automation systems. Uh, the Ashby Journal has been published under uh, various names since uh, Ashby and its predecessor, CABA, were founded uh, around 1990. Uh, it, the journal started as the CABA Quarterly, then became the magazine I Homes and Buildings, now is uh, incarnated as the Ashby Journal. It consists of original articles submitted by uh, uh, volunteers, uh, members of Ashby. Um, I've recently uh, been writing a series of articles on energy management based on international standards. You're welcome to read that. So Ashby Journal is found uh, under uh, the ashby.com. Uh, both the Intelligent Building Council and the Connected Home Council uh, develop original white papers. The IBC White Papers Committee stands ready to help any author move forward on topics that may be of interest to this group. Uh, you come up with a topic, give us an abstract, and we will uh, advertise it and try to put together a working group. Uh, you would still take the lead in authorship, but if you'd like to have help in reviewing or in having roundtable discussions to get ideas to uh, enhance your white paper, we can help you there. So if you have ideas for white papers, please uh, reach out to CABA and Marta will uh, put you in touch with me and we in turn will get you a working party set up to work on your white paper. I should also mention that CABA reviews papers written outside the organization through the Publications Review Committee. We ask CABA members to review five papers a year. Uh, these are papers you may have read anyway in your perusal of journals and trade art and trade magazines. If you find an article you think might be of interest to CABA is within our domain and is not just an advertorial, uh, please uh, consider uh, telling us about it. Uh, and uh, Marta will make arrangements to get the article posted. We would ask you to fill out a review form. We give us about a hundred word description of the article and a uh, number of points, especially keywords about the article so CABA members can then search a library that has uh, thousands of papers already in it to find papers that might be relevant and timely. So this is the Publications Review Committee, and these are all available through uh, ashby.com. Any uh, questions from anyone? Uh, otherwise, please uh, roll up your sleeves and uh, start writing and reading. And by the way, if you do review papers for the Publication Review Committee, we will give you a real thank you in terms of uh, $25 cash and $25 credit towards Ashby purchases. Thanks very much, Bob. Thanks, Ken, I appreciate it. As always, you did a great job uh, managing the white papers. Uh, so that takes us to new business. And you know, some of the things I would like to get input uh, from the group are uh, ideas for new keynote uh, topics um, or even actual keynote presenters that um, you think would have value to the group. Uh, certainly new white paper ideas, uh, any new projects, research projects to discuss, and even any agenda items that you feel like we should be adding to, uh, to our current agenda. Um, so I'll open it up to the floor. Uh, does anyone have any new business that uh, they'd like to discuss? Uh, this is David Katz. I'm working on with a, a U.S. company that is literally putting new glass on existing buildings. So as they're decarbonizing and they're doing this in New York and Boston and they want to do it here in Canada. And literally they can turn the existing, you know, double pane or even single pane window of the older buildings into triple pane or equivalent as we decarbonize. So I think we have to look at the building envelope as part of our decarbonization 
then look at the heat pumps and the controls and the optimization. So I think there's some, uh, I'm making a presentation on these topics, so I might be able to do it here as well. Thanks, David. That, that's actually a, that's a good contribution. You know, I think we, we do kind of neglect the, uh, the envelope a bit when we talk about uh, smart buildings. It's not nearly as exciting as, you know, control system and so on, but, uh, but should uh, warrant the same attention for sure. I'll just add, because as I saw the edge and, and, and actually a cabin member is we, we had automated window glass in order to facilitate demand response. Uh, we have a Calgary company that's doing AI automated shading and facilitates following the sun and monitoring the sun as the blinds block that sun and the, you know, dolly lights can dim and then go back up. So we can integrate with the building envelope optimization opportunities as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, part of that holistic uh, building approach for sure. Yep, definitely. But any other uh, ideas? Yeah, Bob, this is Ken Wax. I would add to what David said that there is a new uh, crystalline technology that can be incorporated into window panes to generate some power from some of the light being transmitted through the window glass. Uh, we're looking at that, uh, or I'm going to be speaking to that as part of a panel discussion next week at the Smart Energy Summit co-located with Distributech in Orlando. Great. And, uh, yeah, that's coming up, what, next week? Yeah. Yeah. Opens uh, <laughs> Tuesday. Excellent. Thanks, Ken. Anyone else like to chime in? Uh, this well, is Michael. I just, uh, sorry, go for it, David. No, I just want to say, because Ken reminded me, I am speaking, and Marta is posting this, I am speaking on how smart buildings can contribute to ESG. I'm presenting at the uh, NFPT or NFMD forum on March in Baltimore, and we'll be showing uh, CABA slides and our at Ashby slides, as well as the progress on how to take the data and use it for ESG, which is what just Gary has shown. The more data we have, the more we can report as to what it's doing. But we have to go beyond energy. We have to go into the governance of that data, the cybersecurity, the social benefits of that. That's what ESG is about. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So, Michael? Yeah, so I was just about to say something along similar lines. So <laughs> one of the things I think uh, we're getting asked more and more about from our customers is, not so much about the technology, but the data itself and what to do with the data. And some people have their own data analysts and data scientists that can do a lot with it, but some people don't. So we work with partners like Accenture and, and a few others, but I was wondering if it would be worth doing something around data, as David just said, because the, you can all the data that Gary mentioned can also be used, and, and it's not necessarily about automation per se, but... It, you can be used for ESG. It can be used for space saving uh, ROI calculations. It can be used obviously for energy, but, and the indoor air quality piece, you know, making a building healthier and safer for the people in it for productivity and health and well-being doesn't mean you need to spend more money on energy and ramping up systems. But unless you've got all of that data together for someone to analyze and different people use data in different ways and, and, we work with so many different stakeholders in buildings that, and so many different, different people in those buildings use the data in different ways, but it's all an outcome to drive either operational efficiency, energy savings, ESG reporting and sustainability goals that, as David just said as well, there's a plethora of data out there. It's not just about energy data, but energy data is one of the core data sets for it, but there's a lot more out there. So I was just wondering if a, if a talk on that and some of the things that, that people are doing on that would, would be a good one to bring to the fore as well. Yeah, thanks, Michael. I, I agree. I think that is a good topic. I think we have a lot of conversations and a lot of presentations on um, the discussion about gathering the data, but we really haven't uh, dived deep enough into the application of the data. Yeah. Yeah, great point. And, and to that, uh, Michael, um, we'll connect a little later this year, maybe in Q3, to have you speak uh, in Q4 um, about that, because I think uh, I think we've reserved a spot for for such a topic. Okay, no problem. 
Great. All right. Uh, anyone else have anything to add or should we move on? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, so a couple of quick announcements here. Um, some up and coming events that uh, Ashby will be attending. Uh, David mentioned Distributech next week, February 26th or 29th in Orlando. Uh, also look out for IFMA World Workplace, March 6th through 7th in the Netherlands. And then ControlsCon, May 16th through 17th in Dallas. And RealCon or IBCon, uh, June 20th through 21st in Tampa. Um, also, just a side note, uh, Ashby is holding its second triannual board of directors meeting uh, for the year at the uh, RealCom event. So uh, if you are attending, make sure you look out for our board of directors and uh, say hi to them when you can. Hey, Marta, kind of question. Uh, yeah. I, have a, I have a bunch of Kaba lapel pins, but do we have new pins for Ashby? <laughs> I love that question. Um, I, hopefully soon. We're, we're looking into it. We uh, we definitely want to start replacing the, the old ones, but uh, just bear with me. We'll, we'll try and get those for, for the next, uh, for the next event. Hopefully we can get those uh, going for, for real con or real com at least. Awesome. Well, you know, until then, I'll just put a little sticker over my, uh, my Kava. <laughs> yes. And... <laughs> I could, I could send out emails with, uh, with the template, the sticker template. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, those are the agenda topics that, uh, that we wanted to cover today. Before I go into adjournment, I'll just open the mic one more time for any uh, closing thoughts, uh, from, um, from our, our, our team here. I'll just add there's an event, James Dice of the Nexus Foundation is doing a, a major issue, a major uh, something in September in person. Uh, I might send it over to uh, to Marta. Uh, I, I've taken James Dice's course. He's a guru in pushing smarter buildings. I will also mention I'm talking again with uh, uh, Monday Live and, and uh, Division 2525. We, uh, we had that Smarter Summit event. Uh, just before AHR Expo in Chicago. And um, there's a, a number of efforts in the smarter building space that I think we can bring to Ashby. Great. Thanks, David. Cool. Um, all right. One last note here. Uh, the next IBC meeting will be sometime in May. Um, we'll get a date announced uh, fairly soon once we can get uh, some schedules coordinated. So be on the lookout for that in your emails. Uh, and uh, that's all I've admired. Was there anything you wanted to add before I uh, begin the closeout? No, that's it. Thanks, Bob. All right. Awesome. Then uh, I'd like to make a call for a motion to uh, close out the meeting. David Katz moves to close the meeting. Thank you, David. Anybody willing to second David's motion? Yeah, yeah Michael Grant second that. Thanks, Michael. Are there any opposed? All right, hearing none opposed, uh, I hereby close this meeting and thank everyone for their attendance and contributions. Uh, and if I don't uh, talk